on the bench is just incredible. Spot level here. I'm grain filling this Telecaster custom build at the moment. That's going to look awesome when it's done. Amp repair, amp repair, amp repair. This is really sweet. This is a old acoustic guitar from the 1930s or 40s that I'm getting ready to sell. Just a couple more things there and it's going to be out on the floor. Oh, this uh, still working on this bass that got chopped in half during an accident a while back. A couple of necks from a few different custom builds going on. What's over here? Buzzing, buzzing, uh, custom build jazz master. And uh, neck reset on a viola, jack repair here, uh, pedal repair, and a couple of neck refins that we're doing over here. And this up here is really sweet. This is an old Hofner, I think it's a student model, that we're doing a lefty to righty conversion on. So we had to install side dots on that. And then on the body, the pots from the electronics were really in the way of a right-handed player. So we installed them on top here so that, you know, you still have easy access, but they're not going to be getting in the way of your picking hand. So that's going to be really awesome when it's finished. But the star of the show today is this bad boy. Oh yeah, son. My food just got here. All right. So, this belongs to Christian from a band called Closing Time, a band with whom I fill in every once in a while. It's got a couple of buzzing issues up top. Um, there's a high fret at 17. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean up the neck. Is giving this thing a little bit of a naphtha bath and on a molecular level this stuff is virtually indistinguishable from zippo lighter fluid and what this will do is break up any grit and grime so that when we come through here later on with uh, fretboard conditioning oil it'll just carry all that stuff away you see me using these fret rockers there's a, a, i just got this device not too long ago it, this thing was crazy expensive um, but sort of when you look at it, it's kind of the same thing, right? But it's got diamond files in the middle of it. So you can just take it and instead of rocking, you just file back and forth and it doesn't allow you to go too far. Because the thing about spot leveling is it's super precarious. If you go just the tiniest bit too far, then what happens is now the next fret is too high and then the next fret is too high and then oh, the one above it is too high as well. So it can become this game of whack-a-mole where all of a sudden you've been working on this thing for three hours and at that point you might as well have just done a regular level. So this is going to make life a lot easier as far as that stuff is concerned. Oh my god. Perfect. Oh. That might not seem like a big deal. It might just seem, oh yeah, you took that fret down, but for someone like me, that is just like, it takes so much mental energy out of doing this, where before you'd have to be like, okay, one swipe, uh, one swipe, uh, like, it, oh, it's just such a big help. We didn't really take off much to speak of, but just enough that we're gonna have to reshape these frets. So now I'm going to hit all the frets with fretboard oil and uh, 4 aught steel wool. And there's sort of a, a dual purpose thing there. Um, it gets the rest of the stuff out that we loosened up with the naphtha and it gives some commonality to all the frets so that the ones you worked on don't stick out. Here we are the next day. I let it sit overnight because I gave the truss rod just the tiniest little tweak. Like we're talking probably a sixteenth of a turn just to straighten out the neck a little bit so that I could re-radius this here and have it, all the buzzing just totally gone. That area was really bad before.